happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl. In this episode of the Woman at the Well Ministries podcast, join Kim Miller and Erica Close in a conversation as we walk with Jesus. In today's conversation, we continue to discuss the importance of the Romans Road and the power it has as a tool to witness to others and build the kingdom of God. Well, thank you all so much for joining us in today's podcast. My name's Erica Close, and I am here with Kim Miller. Hello, and thank you guys so much for joining us today. I believe we could not pick a more needed subject than the Romans row as a tool to be a effective witness for the Lord. We are told that we are to be the light of the world, and we're not to hide our light under a bushel because we should put our light on a candlestick so that everybody could see it. And our life is to be lived in such a way that it gives honor and glory to the Lord. That's what we're told in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. But some of us get so bogged down with how to do it. So we've decided to devote quite a few episodes to just spending time in the scriptures so that you fully understand how to tell somebody else to be saved. Telling the story you already know if you've given your life to Christ. And so Erica and I are going to continue on this path until we have come to the end of Romans Road. And it's our prayer that every one of you listening to us, when you get to the end of Romans Road, You know him personally, and you also know how to bring somebody else on this journey from here to heaven with you. I think it's so important that you talked about how when we are sharing the gospel as saved individuals, we are sharing what we know. And so the most wonderful thing that you can do when you're telling people about what it means to be a Christian is to share your own experience, but your experience is going to reflect these verses. As saved Christians, we have walked down this Romans road. Amen. So I'm going to review the Romans road, and then we're going to hop into the point of the road where we find ourselves today. So the Romans road is a series of verses, the first of which being Romans 3.23, which says, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. And then we have Romans 6.23, which reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we talked about those two verses in last Wednesday's podcast. So we invite you to go back if you weren't able to listen to that one. Then we continue on down the Romans road. After talking about how the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, we move into Romans 5, 8, which says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then we talk about the verse that talks about how it is that we are saved. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then to close out the Romans road, we go to Romans 10, 13, which says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. That is a simple set of verses. But these verses are an incredible tool when you are trying to effectively share the scripture that explains why we need a Savior, what God did to provide a Savior for us, and then how it is that we are saved. So like I said, we talked about Romans 6.23 and 3.23 last week. And today we are stopping in Romans 5.8. And Romans 5.8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I love this verse. Absolutely. It is a powerful, powerful verse. One of my favorite things about this verse is the word commendeth. Commendeth to me is like giving someone a commendation, almost like a a recommendation, right? It is something that is given to you. It's a huge gift. It's it's kind of like an honor. It's it's a gift that is, I think, above many other gifts. Okay, but God commends, He gives us His love. He commends His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, before we ever even understood that we were a sinner in need of a Savior, Christ himself died for us. Amen. When we think about him commending his love, we can't help but see that in John 3.16. And that's a very familiar verse that most people know and Rarely would I take someone down the Romans road that John 3.16 wouldn't appear, and clearly it's not on the Romans road, but it's kind of the rest area. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you think about the demonstration of love that God had for us and continues to have for us, But when you think about his finished work on Calvary, you cannot ignore the amazing love that he gave us. And he didn't just stop on Calvary, but because he never leaves us or forsakes us, that love is continually poured upon us because he doesn't want anyone to perish but that all should come to repentance. This love becomes magnified. It becomes so encompassing because it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what you haven't done. Jesus loves you and he gave himself for you. Not when you were worthy, Not when you deserved it, but when you were a sinner. And, you know, if you read that passage, it talks about that some might die for a righteous man, but no one would dare to die for an evil one. No one except Jesus. Absolutely. He justified us with his own blood simply because he loved us. And you know, when he came to earth as a babe in a manger, which let me, spoiler alert, he's not coming back as a babe in a manger. But when he came, he knew what his father's will was. He knew that he was the only payment for sin. Yet, he willingly took that upon himself. And if you don't believe me, read the account of the Garden of Gethsemane, where he says, Lord, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. He wasn't shirking his duties, but it showed every one of us who've read that. He willingly knew what he was walking into when he was carrying his cross to Calvary on the hill of Golgotha. That's love. It's amazing love. You know, when we look at the place of this verse in in the series of verses that we call the Romans Road, we have those first two verses that talk about 
you know, how we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then 623 talks about the wages of sin is death. What is due to us as sinners. And then we have Romans 5, 8 that starts out with one of my most favorite phrases in all of scripture, which is, but God. Amen. The Romans road sets up the reality of our place as sinners, the reality of our place of what is due us because of what we have done and who we are. And then we have this verse that says, but God. This is a turning point. And as you said, while we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, he willingly took our sin upon him. I love that you say he didn't come for us when we had, you said something to the effect of he didn't come for us when we had made ourselves ready to receive him. He came for us when we were in our worst state. And he came because he was the only payment that was going to be acceptable. And in John chapter 3, verse 7, he says, Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. We had to have his sinless, perfect blood to pay our penalty for sin. And he paid a penalty he didn't know for people who usually don't even acknowledge what he does. But he loved us enough to die for us because that's what it took to make us in right standing with God. He was our propitiation for our sins. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible, it tells me so, especially in Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8 is, is the crux. It's the turning point on the road. It's the verse that lets us know that, but God, for all of our sins, for all of what we are due, for every situation in our lives, but God, there's always a turning point where he turns the situation around. Amen. If we allow him and we ask him to, and then follow him, he'll turn the situation around. This is what seems to be a simple verse. And it's not at all a simple verse. It's a huge verse, a huge stopping point along the Roman road, Romans road. And as you are sharing with others, this is a verse you can't leave out. It's the foundational point of the whole reason we have the free gift, because he loved us enough to give himself. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is the gift that he gave us. This verse, but God, shows us the gift. And it's the gift that keeps on giving. And we are so grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us. And it is our prayer that you know him personally. If you have questions or need more information regarding how to make Jesus your personal Savior, please contact us at our website at watwm.org. And remember, Jesus loves you. You are loved. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved.